Okay, we are finally here walking on the John Deere 410 loader backhoe again. And we are uh, just getting ready to start reassembling the engine. Uh, if you haven't seen my last videos, it'll be a card up here top of your screen. And uh, you can go to those to my other videos. Uh, where I get this whole engine torn down and removed out of the backhoe. And uh, today I'm going to be uh, trying to pull the gears off of the uh, camshaft and the crankshaft. And because uh, I got to put the gears onto the new cam and the crankshaft. And uh, we're going to try to get that done because that's about the first thing that has to be done before I can put them into the engine. And so uh, I had to borrow a pull load because I don't have one. I had a press that I could use, but uh, I don't think we can get the crankshaft into the press. And uh, if we can't get the gear off of the camshaft, then I can probably get it into a press. But for now, we're going to give the pole a try and see what happens. I'm going to see how far we can get here. Um, once these gears are swapped out onto the new crank and camshaft, then go ahead and put the crankshaft in with the new bearings and seals and all that stuff. And then uh, that would be a good head start and hopefully get the rest of the engine assembled from there. Okay, before we get started here, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. And be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell. I have a lot more videos coming up here on this bag out and other machines. And uh, we're getting really close to 1,000 subscribers. Hoping to start doing a lot more stuff when we get more subscribers. So that would really help me out a lot. Okay, so I'm back here the next day, and um, I got my new camshaft right here in this tube, and I'm getting ready to put the uh, gear on it, and along with the gear on the uh, crankshaft. Uh, I got both gears in the oven right now, heating at 500 degrees, so I'm hoping they're going to drop on pretty easy. Uh, this morning I also uh, got a piece of plastic and some old wood, and I uh, put plastic over the back side of my building, as you can probably see, you can probably hear it more than you can see it to uh, help keep the wind down because the wind's supposed to blow about 20 miles an hour about every day for the next 10 days. So uh, I put up that plastic so I can hopefully close the doors here and then uh, keep some of the wind out along with the dust and all that stuff so hopefully it uh, stays halfway clean so I can reassemble this engine. So I'm going to go ahead and go get the gears and uh, first part I'm going to do the uh, camshaft here and we'll see on how it goes. I'm hoping it's going to drop on pretty easy, but we'll find out. Okay, we got both gears dropped on the uh, cam and crankshaft. That went way easier than I thought it might go. Um, I was told that if you heat them in the oven about 500 degrees, they should just drop right on, and then they were right. It was just couldn't have been easier. Uh, I went ahead and got the uh, crankshaft cleaned because it had a uh, varnish on it from uh, shipping, so it didn't rust. And I went ahead and got all that cleaned off, and now I'm going to go ahead 
and start cleaning the engine block because uh, I need to get all, this, all the gas and stuff off of it. And then once all that's cleaned off of it, I'm going to uh, use some diesel fuel and spray down the whole engine block to make sure I get out any metal dust that happens to be in the engine because uh, with all the metal flakes and dust that was in the oil filter and oil pan when I tore this down, I know it probably has to be something inside here. I want to make sure everything's out before I uh, get it put back together. all of the old gasket scraped off the engine block and uh, kind of went over it, cleaned it, what I could on it. I then used a uh, blower with siphon hose on it, on the air compressor, and I uh, blew diesel fuel over it to, uh, to clean off all the old metal dust and metal flakes and everything that could be in there and uh, kind of got all of it off. Uh, it's about dark now and uh, I'll probably get started back here again tomorrow morning and get the crankshaft dropped in and uh, you know, see how much more we can get assembled on it. Okay, this is uh, day three and it's as windy as ever. It's about 25 miles an hour today. And uh, I hope you can hear me over this plastic here on the wall. Really blown, snapping back and forth. But uh, I got this engine block uh, cleaned out. I think about as good as I can. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and start putting the uh, bearings in place and, and get the uh, crankshaft uh, set down. Okay, so we went to put in the bushings for the uh, balancing shafts, and um, I successfully ruined our first new part, which isn't that big of a deal because it's cheap. And I uh, bugged up one of the bushings. I was not thanking the tool I was using, 
uh, has those discs that are the perfect size. One fits inside, one is the same thickness as the outside here, so it's flush, so you can drive them in. And then the one disc that goes on the outside here was too small, so when I drove it in, it spread apart. You can see that gap there, it spread apart the bushing. I uh, went and priced new bushings and it only cost like $3. So I'm not really out much, and of all the parts to ruin, that's probably the best part I could have possibly ruined. And next here I'm going to be uh, tightening down these uh, caps here on the uh, crankshaft. And um, I have to uh, pull these bolts out and uh, put oil on them and put them back in. And these torque down according to my book to 100 and 100. They torque down to 85 pounds. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get those tightened down and um, I'll probably try my luck here rolling over the engine after those are tightened and start putting the uh, sleeves in. I already got the connecting rods hooked to the pistons and so I should be able to get those dropped in fairly easy and uh, be on my way to get this engine finished. lightly snug these all up before I torque them down. connecting rod and piston right here in the box along the sleeve and it's uh the sleeves are all uh, the pistons are already in the sleeves so I got them so I just slid them back and put the connecting rods on and it's kind of stupidest thing is I cannot get these bolts out they're so tight and uh these are tight from the factory so uh, I'm going to try to use this new impact that we got here. It's an electric impact. I have never used it. We've had it for a couple months now, but the weather's been so lousy. I haven't had much of a use for it. So I'm going to try to use that to uh, get these bolts taken out of here, and uh, I guess we'll see how it is. Okay, so I have the O-rings here for the uh, sleeves, and according to the directions, uh, this O-ring here goes in the middle, and uh, this square one goes on the top, and this uh, black round one goes on the bottom, and uh, 
I'm probably not going to be able to show down inside here. I'll show a picture right here. You can see the grooves that the oven set in. And uh, there's two grooves in the block. There's the ovens set in. The uh, red one goes on top, black round goes on the bottom. And then the square black one goes on the uh, sleeve itself. I'm going to go ahead here and get this wiped down, get the oil wiped off of this. These sleeves, I mean, come with oil on them so they don't rust. And uh, they say not to use oil on these ovens because you can make them swell. And they say just to use uh, standard uh, dish soap. So I just got you know, just Dawn soap here. So I'm going to use this. This is not sponsored, although if they want to sponsor me, go ahead. I don't know how I'm supposed to get two hands in here. Okay, got the one oving in. Now the second oving. I got a hand of it now, man. It's going to go in a little easier than the last one. 20 minutes later. Okay, I finally got the ovens in the block. It took me like 15 minutes to get them on. I don't know why it took me so long. I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, square oven here on the sleeve. And it should just slide right down. Watch this take me another 15 minutes to put this on. Make sure it goes on. Make sure it doesn't twist or get rolled. Okay, I got my uh, dish soap here. Put a little bit on the seal. And I'll set it go ahead and they said to put some on this part of the sleeve here to help it slide through. Now these uh, uh, pistons and connecting rods are directional like they always are and uh, has an arrow here that says that's the front and the connecting rods already on the uh, proper direction. So I guess I'll go ahead and I get this dropped in. I already got my soap down here on these other seals, so I should be good to go. I'm supposedly supposed to just drop this in, and according to the YouTube video, it looks pretty straightforward. <laughs> okay. Just lightly press on it. A few inches later. Okay, there it is. I'm uh, guessing that's seated down all the way. It should stick up just a little. And then your uh, head gasket sets around it. Okay. Make sure this is facing the right direction. Use my trusty hammer with a stick of oak. And I guess that's it. Okay, so I got my connecting rod sticking down right here. And I'll, uh, Try to push it through a little. It's a little bit easier to get to it. And I'll go ahead and get my bearing put on. Wow, 
while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and get the bearing put in place over the end cap just so it's ready. Okay, Let's see if I can get this engine turned over. Wipe my greasy fingerprints off here. I don't know if that matters. There we go. You know, I forgot to put oil on that bearing. It slipped a little bit anyway. So let me roll this back. Okay, you're supposed to put oil on your bolts. That way when you tighten down the bolts, you're not talking down against friction. And then your bolts be properly torqued. I'm not going to tighten these down much, just get them lightly snug. Then I'll come back through and I will pour all of these when I'm done. Okay, this one here is uh, done for now, and I guess I'll uh, get the other piston sleeve put in. Okay, everything 
shoes on and just need to uh, torque these down. My book shows 52 pounds. This. I've made pretty good progress and next I'm going to be uh, putting the plate here on the front of the engine and uh, get all the uh, gears and stuff put back on and uh, I'm going to uh, try to be all timed. If you remember I painted all the gears, all the mulch on them so hopefully they should line back up and should all uh, still be timed. So I'm going to uh, get that tackled here next and don't forget to uh, like the video and uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Hit that notification bell and I appreciate you guys watching.